Step 8. Administer the practical media fill exercise. The media fill exercise demonstrates the candidate's ability to accurately compound a CSP of appropriate complexity without compromising the sterility of the product. Validation of the candidate in the correct compounding techniques is carried out under the direct supervision of the preceptor, incorporating the defined process and equipment under worst case conditions. For the initial validation, the test should be performed in triplicate when the candidate is most stressed or tired. This will normally occur at the end of the shift. Validation of USP low-risk compounding by pharmacy or non-pharmacy personnel may be carried out using the Attack 2 validation kit. Validation of USP medium-risk compounding is carried out using the RL2 kit or Valitech bulk media. Validation of USP high-risk compounding exercises is best designed on a case-by-case -case basis. Information and suggestions on validating high-risk compounding operations may be obtained directly from Lab Safety Corporation by calling toll-free at 800-433-7698. Because the practical validation exercise is not a statistical test, it is essential that a competent observer be present to carefully evaluate the candidate's compounding technique while completing the comprehensive assessment of aseptic technique contained in the DMS. The following is a recommended 10-step process for demonstration of competency in USP medium risk compounding. Direct the candidate to select the proper compounding tools for the task. Using the normal staging and setup sequence, the candidate should select and place the following materials onto the critical work surface in preparation for the media fill exercise. The Valitech VM20R, a 20 ml vial of dry, sterile tripsoy powder. The VM30, a 30 ml vial of sterile tripsoy broth. The VM10, a 10 ml vial of sterile tripsoy broth. And the VM10A, a 10 ml ampule of sterile tripsoy broth, two 10 ml vials or one 20 ml vial of sterile water for injection, a filter needle, a hydrophilic dispensing pin, nine 18 or higher gauge needles, and a 150 to 250 ml empty sterile bag or evacuated bottle as the final container. Also place the following syringes onto the critical work surface. 6 10 ml, 2 20 ml, and 1 30 ml. Also, you will need an automated compounder set up with sterile water for injection, or a Y set in a bag of sterile water for injection. Step one, if a compounder is to be used in the validation, transfer 50 ml of sterile water for injection into the final container. For operation without a compounder, use the method you would normally incorporate for transferring large volumes when compounding TPMs, usually a liter bag and a Y set. Step 2. Using the 30 ml syringe, draw up 20 ml of sterile water for injection from the staged vials and reconstitute the VM20R. Step 3. Insert a dispensing pin into the VM30. Using a 10 ml syringe, withdraw 5 ml of VM30 through the dispensing pin. Add a needle and transfer to the final container. Step 4. Using a 10 ml syringe, withdraw 5 ml of VM20R from the reconstituted vial and transfer into the final container. Step 5. Using a 20 ml syringe, withdraw 10 ml of VM10 and transfer into the final container. Step 6. Using a 10 ml syringe, 
make a second withdrawal of 5 ml of VM30 through the dispensing pin. Attach a needle to the syringe and transfer it into the final container. Step 7. Using a 10 ml syringe, make a second withdrawal of 5 ml of VM20R and transfer it into the final container. Step 8. Carefully open the VM10A. Using a 20 ml syringe and needle, withdraw 10 ml of VM10A. Change to the filter needle before transferring into the final container. Step 9. Using a 10 ml syringe, make a third withdrawal of 5 ml of VM30 through the dispensing pin and transfer into the final container. Step 10. With a 10 ml syringe, make a third withdrawal of 5 ml of VM20R and transfer it into the final container. Label the final container with the labels provided in the RL2 kit. Prepare the VM20R and VM30 vials for storage. For maximum points awarded, the label should include the initials of the operator, the date, and in the case of reconstituted product, the diluent and final concentration. No incubator is required. Incubate these materials at room temperature of 20 to 25 degrees centigrade for 14 days. This may be carried out in a secured desk drawer or cabinet located in a stable room temperature environment. Be certain to have some reliable means of controlling and verifying the incubation temperature and verify the temperature at least once daily. Observe the additive vials and final containers for turbidity, sediment, or discrete colonies that indicate microbial growth at 24 hours, 72 hours, one week, and two weeks. Following each observation, make the appropriate data entry to the RL2 validation exercise sterility log provided in the RL2 kit package insert. Remember, the initial validation process for each operative should be carried out in triplicate. Recurrent revalidations may be carried out as a single exercise. The initial and recurrent exercises must duplicate the most complex compounding process that the operative is likely to encounter during normal operations. Validating a simple USP medium risk process, such as one or two additives to a large volume parenteral, does not validate more complex medium risk processes such as preparation of TPNs. The complexity of the validation exercise must match the complexity of the actual compounding process in order to meet the requirements of USP 797. There are many ways to increase the complexity of the Valitec validation exercise to simulate the most complex processes encountered by your compounding staff. The basic process we have presented yields a bag or bottle containing 100 mLs of growth medium. The candidate may be directed to perform additional manipulative steps, such as drawing up syringes from the bag, attaching an administration set, making a bulk transfer using a Y set, or attaching a repeating syringe and dispensing multiple aliquots into empty sterile vials. Numerous variations are possible and should be incorporated into your technique challenge and process validation exercises in order to simulate all of the compounding tasks normally encountered in your individual setting. For a more exacting challenge of the operative skill, a compound strength may be assigned to each of the additive containers to verify the candidate's ability to calculate the proper volumes for all additives. For example, 
The compound strength of each of the Valitec additives may be represented as milligrams or milliequivalents per ml and indicated on the label. The validation exercise may then be initiated directly from the label or the physician's order.